Hello, this is Students Teach Orgo with a quick video on SN1, SN2, and SN2 Prime and E2 reactions. Uh, this video is going to focus specifically on those reactions at allylic and benzylic carbons, but uh, we'll, we'll include some quick reviews just in case uh, it's been a while since Orgo 1. So to start off here, let's talk about SN1, uh, otherwise known as solvolysis. So uh, a solvolysis reaction is when the solvent, right, the whatever liquid your your organic compound is floating in, the, the solvent is going to be the one reacting with your reactant. So you can see here we have this alkyl bromide, and this alkyl bromide is reacting with the water that it's chilling in, and you're going to get this product. Now the point of this slide is just to show you the relative rates of these different solvolysis reactions. So you can see the difference here is just how substituted the, the bromine is, right? So, or how substituted the carbon is. So this is, you know, a tertiary carbon attached to a bromine, uh, this would be a secondary secondary carbon, and that would be a primary carbon. Um, and you can see that the tertiary is much faster than the secondary, and the secondary is much faster than the primary. And that's all because of the reaction mechanism, which I'll show you here on this slide. Uh, this would be a, a classic SN1 reaction. You can see the first step is that the bromine just leaves. It's out of here. And it's going to take this these electrons with it, and that would give us, you know, Br minus floating around in solution, and would leave this carbocation right here. Um, now, it's really important to note um, this carbocation intermediate, right? Because this explains why tertiary is faster. Um, this tertiary carbocation is much more stable than. Oops, sorry. It would be much more stable than, you know, a secondary carbocation or a primary carbocation. So um, that, that would explain why tertiary goes faster, right? And so then you can see the solvent water attacks. Uh, we, we lose a proton, and that gives us this SN1 product. Um, so again, like I said, this video is going to focus specifically on these reactions at allylic or benzylic carbons. So, so what happens to the reaction rate? Right? So if we have, if we have a leaving group, um, in this case the leaving group is on a benzylic carbon, in this case the leaving group is on an allylic carbon, uh, what, what does that do to the reaction speed? Um, and it turns out it's going to increase the reaction speed. And if I, th I think that looking at the reaction mechanism will help make that more clear, right? So here is the reaction mechanism for an SN1 reaction where the leaving group is on an allylic carbon. So just like before, the first step is kicking out the, the, the leaving group, kicking out the chlorine, and that gives us this carbocation right here. But notice, we could draw a resonance structure where we move that double bond over, and we get this guy right here. So these, these are two resonance structures of the, the same molecule. Um, and when the solvent attacks, right, the solvent could attack either, either one of these, these structures we have drawn here. So the water could either end up on that carbon or the water could end up on this carbon. And so then, just like before, we would kick out, kick out the hydrogens and that gives us these two different alcohols. Now, um, something I just wanted to mention here too is that you know this this would be a stereocenter. So w whenever you have an SN1 reaction and you, you make a carbocation, uh, you do not retain stereochemistry. The the water could attack from either side. So t technically, it'd be this plus an enantiomer. But basically, what I po want to point out is that these SN1 reactions will produce two different um, you know isoforms here, and uh, th this this is an isoform that also has a stereoisomer. Um, and, and this, this happens when, when the leaving group is on an allylic system. So here's our first practice question. Order the following molecules with respect to increasing reactivity in a solvolysis reaction. Um, this is a good question. I would definitely pause it, um, try, try to figure out the order here, write it down. I'm going to go forward. All right, so here's the answer. I've redrawn these in order of increasing reaction speed. Um, and I think this is a good problem for me to, to actually go, go through and ex explain why this is the right order. So what, what I've done here is I've drawn all of, all, of these, all of these reactants from the first page, right? And I just kicked out chlorine on all of them to, to give me the, the cation. And so you can see that we, we have all these cations here. And what I want to point out is that we can use these cations, right? And we can look at the resonance structures to determine the reaction speed of this SN1 reaction, right? So when we kick out chlorine here, we get what's called a vanillic carbocation. And that's when the, 
the plus charge is on a carbon that's sp2 hybridized already it's it's you know attached to a double bond uh, these are very unstable um th these carbocations do not do not like to get formed so so b would definitely be the slowest sn1 reaction um if we look at d we can see that we're sharing this plus charge between two primary carbons right primary primary and so it is the, the, the carbocation is allylically stabilized and I'm sure this reaction would be much faster than say something like this where there is no allylic stabilization but compared to the other ones it's going to be slower uh, you can see this one shares the plus charge between a primary carbon and a secondary carbon so that's going to be faster than this one this one shares it between a secondary and a tertiary so that's going to be faster than this one and this one shares it between a tertiary and a tertiary so C would definitely be the fastest um, that that chlorine would be very very apt to just leave and create this carbocation because that carbocation is very stable so th this would definitely have the fastest SN1 reaction speed and here's the next question here uh, draw the products formed from the following solvolysis reaction include all stereoisomers um, I think these solvolysis questions are pretty easy so I just added the stereoisomer thing to you know flashback to orgo 1 remember remember those rules All right, I'm gonna go forward here um, so you can see this is pretty pretty self-explanatory and the chlorine would leave that would give us a plus charge here we could either have the solvents ethanol we could either have it uh, attack from the front or the back to give us you know the wedge or the dash or we could draw the resin structure where we move that double bond over um, and then we would have the plus charge on this carbon and that would give us this product and this product uh, th these two are just enantiomers but just wanted to point out that there 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 is um, no stereochemistry retention in these reactions. All right, next we'll talk about the substitution reactions, uh, SN2 and SN2 prime. So here we can see the general uh, format for these SN2 reactions. Again, this is just some review from Orgo 1. Uh, you can see that the cyanide ion is the nucleophile here, not, not the solvent. Um, and that's going to be displacing the bromine in, in all of these cases. Again, the, the purpose of the slide is to remind you that there's uh, the reaction rates for SN2 uh, change depending on how substituted the carbon is. Um, so in this case, right, the, the fastest one, the one that goes about 20 times the speed of, of the secondary here, is when the leaving group is on a primary carbon. Um, which is the opposite of SN1. Remember, in, in SN1, the tertiary was the fastest. Uh, we, we flipped that trend around here with SN2. Um, and the reason why we can explain this is because there's less steric hindrance for that cyanide ion to uh, come over here, do a backside attack on carbon number one there, and have bromine leave. Um, but, you know, with, with the tertiary carbon here, there's, there's more steric hindrance, so that, that cyanide ion has a harder time getting in. Um, now, again, I, I told you this video was going to focus on what happens when the, you know, with allylic or benzylic carbons. So when the leaving group is on an allylic or benzylic carbon, the overall trend is that the reaction, the SN2 reaction rate, is going to be much, much faster. Um, and we can explain that by saying that when the nucleophile comes in and there's that transition state where the nucleophile is coming in but the leaving group hasn't quite left yet, um, that that transition state is going to be stabilized by the p orbitals. Um, just remember, it, it's not going to be carbocations, right? Because there's no carbocations formed in SN2 reactions. But uh, the, the the overlap of these p orbitals um, with the benzylic or the allylic case are just going to make S SN2 reactions go faster in general when the leaving group is on an allylic or benzylic carbon. Um, now, what I also wanted to focus on is the fact that when the leaving group is on an allylic carbon you can have this special kind of SN2 reaction called the SN2 prime. Um, sometimes they'll denote it with that. That's a, that, that little like apostrophe means prime. Um, and I'll, I'll explain to you the conditions in, under which this is super favorable, but let's, let's look at this template right here. Right? So you can see that in this case, the nucleophile isn't attacking the carbon that has the leaving group. Right? This nucleophilic attack is happening at a remote site, and then we're moving the double bond over, and then the leaving group um, leaves. Now, the reason or the conditions that make this especially favorable are when the leaving group is on an allylic carbon, that, that has to be the case, and the leaving group is on a tertiary carbon, right? Because when the leaving group is on a tertiary carbon, the, the nucleophile can't really get in there because there's just too much steric hindrance. So it's going to much, much prefer to attack at this remote site 
um, we'll have that double bond move over and kick out the leaving group. Um, so let us look at a practice question. Draw the major product of the following SN2 prime reaction. Uh, this is a good one, good one to try out. I'm going to go forward though. I'll show the answer. Um, you can see that this would this would be our product. Uh, pretty pretty straightforward. Right here, this the sulfur would be the nucleophile. It would attack at that carbon right there. The double bond would move over, and iodine would be a great leaving group. And so you can see this this is what the product of the SN2 prime reaction would look like. Last but not least, we're going to talk about these E2 elimination reactions. Uh, here is the general template that you'd follow for these elimination reactions. Notice that this time the leaving group, right, the, the bromine, isn't on the allylic or the benzylic carbon. It's actually one carbon away. Um, and the reason for this is that the E2 elimination is going to be enhanced by the allylic or benzylic system when, when the proton is in that allylic or benzylic position. Um, and the reason for that is um, that the proton is going to be much more acidic when it's in an allylic or benzylic position. And when, when the E2 elimination happens, you're going to create a product that is going to be stabilized by having a conjugated pi system, right? So this double bond is going to be talking to this pi system in the benzene ring, and these two double bonds are all part of the same pi system. So uh, again, you're going to have a strong base that strong base is going to pull a proton from the allylic or benzylic position. The electrons in that bond that were holding you know, the, the carbon and the hydrogen together, that's going to move to make a double bond. And in making a double bond, you're going to push out the leaving group to give you products that look like this and like this. Um, and so here is the next practice question. Predict and draw the elimination product of the following reaction. I'll go forward and show you the answer here. Uh, this this is what we'd expect to get as a product, which means that it would be this bromine right here that's going to get kicked out. And the reason that is, is because we have a hydrogen here, right, a proton that is wedged. And because this proton is in that allylic position, this is going to be especially acidic. So the base would want to come over and grab that proton. That's going to have the electrons in that bond come over here to make a double bond, and we'd push out that bromine, giving us this. Um, that, that's that's what we'd expect expect here. Oh, look at that! I drew out the arrows beforehand. How convenient. Um, and last practice question for today: Draw the curved arrow mechanism that results in the elimination product of the following reaction. Uh, I, I spent some time to make this uh, a particularly tricky tricky question, so this this is a good one to to test your knowledge. On, on E2 E2 reactions. Pause the video. Okay, I'm gonna go forward. So if I was solving this problem, the first thing I would do is draw in the protons, right? And the reason why I would draw in these protons, these hydrogens, is because both of these hydrogens are in benzylic positions. So if you think about it, we, we've got a few options here, right? We we could have the base take this proton and create a double bond here and have that chlorine leave, or we could have the base take this proton here and have the bromine leave, or we could have the base take this proton and have the chlorine leave. And so, you know, there's three reasonable options that um, you could think about while looking at this, but I'm going to tell you right now, only one of them would actually occur. Only one of them is, is the right reaction. And so the right one would actually be two, where we have the base pull this proton specifically and have the bromine leave. And this is important because remember that in order for E2 eliminations to occur, you need to have an anti-periplanar relationship between the leaving group and the acidic proton, the proton that's leaving. So the reason why we can't pull this hydrogen, right, is because anti-periplanar to that hydrogen would be this. And again, anti-periplanar just means that like if this is wedged, the leaving group has to be dashed. And so this is a wedged hydrogen, um, but the leaving group is also wedged. So, so this, this you, you can't do an E2 elimination here. And over here, we're pulling a hydrogen that's dashed, which means the leaving group has to be wedged. So specifically, it needs to be the bromine that leaves. And so the correct answer would be this structure right here, where the new double bond we make is right there, and bromine is the leaving group. That's all for this video today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you find it helpful. Take care.